After a stop in Oaxaca City, my cousin John and I headed out on our fact-finding mission. Just south of Oaxaca on the main highway is the rustic little town of Maratlan, the gateway to Mezcal country. We stopped to have a look and to try some of the adulterated products. It was like the difference between tasting Valrona and Hershey's chocolate side by side. There was just no comparison. But one needs to experience the mediocre in order to appreciate the sublime. Our guide for the tour was Pancho Martinez. Pancho is a production manager for the Del Megue company. Being a Zapotec Indian and fluent in both Spanish and his native tongue, he's key to explaining the needs of the company to the distillers, or palenqueros, many of whom speak little or no Spanish. We followed Pancho's car for several hours, heading further south and further up into the rugged highlands where the maguey plant really flourishes. Our destination was the farming village of Chichicapa to experience some quiet simplicity and to taste some mezcal straight from the source. We came across fields of dry rocky soil holding row after row of maturing maguey plants, patiently waiting for their life of 8 to 12 years to be transformed into artisan mezcal. The maguey is not a cactus, but an agave, more closely related to the lily family. Expecting to see a small distillation factory, I was surprised to find a very rustic looking facility barely sheltered from the elements with workers utilizing a very antiquated form of production. But this is one reason why Del Maguey's product is so special. In order to make mezcal, the distiller, or palenquero, first digs a deep wide hole in the ground. He then fills the hole with wood and rocks. The wood is set on fire, heating the rocks to hundreds of degrees. Meanwhile, the maguey plants are cut at the base and cleaned of all their leaves. What is left is the heart, called a piña, or pineapple, for which it closely resembles. Once the fire has burned away, only the hot stones are left. The hearts of the maguey are then thrown into the pit and covered with palm leaves and earth. They are left to roast for several days until they are cooked through. The cooked maguey is then cut into pieces and thrown into the mill ring to be mashed the old-fashioned way. I got involved in helping the workers drive their weary horse in an endless circle in order to achieve their goal. After a day of this, I just want to feel like I had a bottle of mezcal. <laughs> I watched as they flung the mashed fiber into large wooden vats, extracting the sweet caramelized nectar that comes from the roasted maguey. Julian Gomez oversees operations in Mexico for the company, especially quality control. Julian explained to us how one always must make a toast in the traditional manner when opening a fresh bottle. Aquí también la, el ofrecimiento cuando le dan a uno un mezcal, cuando le dan una botella, uno se vuelve padrino de esa botella. La tiene que ofrecer a los invitados porque si no, uno se la debe de tomar. <laughs> Entonces, este, por ser bebida espirituosa, bebida fuerte, pues necesitamos repartir a la mayor parte posible. Este, se inicia el ritual llenando la copa. Y la, y la copa, lo que hacemos con ella es darle gracias a la madre naturaleza. 
principalmente a la tierra, porque es de donde sale ese fruto, y, y es haciendo en la parte baja, tirando uh -huh. y haciendo una cruz por la costumbre uh -huh. de la, o sea, más que nada, Dale un es poco. Este, parte de nuestra propia cultura, o nos vienen a culturizar uh -huh. los españoles a través de los dominicos, y por eso es la cruz en la tierra, la primera señal, y el mezcal ya es destilado. Y ya se degusta. Pues salud, chichimbe. Mm. Muy buenísimo. Mm.